Hello and welcome to Dinosaur Park Primeval Zoo. Here you can create your dinosaur zoo and design it according to your own taste and style. At the beginning there is, well, nothing going on as you can see, but with a little creativity your park will become a real visitor magnet. Of course, people don't just drop by, you have to offer them something. Living dinosaurs frozen for millions of years are a sensation by themselves. But for the park to be really successful, you need souvenir stores, a nicely decorated ambience and things like toilets and trash cans. While building the park, you can see the visitor bar filling up here in the upper left corner. When it's full, it means a new person has come to visit. Everything in your park has a set popularity value that determines how far up the scale it goes. New dinos are of course the most popular park feature. Next to it you can see your level. Each time you level up, new game content will be unlocked. E.g. new dinos or decorations are made available in the shop. To reach the next level you will need experience points, these blue stars. You'll get them for pretty much everything you have to do in your zoo anyway, like taking care of dinos, cleaning up trash and so on. In the upper right corner you can expand and minimize the main menu. Let's take a closer look. At the top is the inventory. There you'll find all things you already own but haven't placed in your park yet, represented by individual small cards. Simply drag such a card into the game to place the item. You can then align it again as you like and confirm. Oops, inventory empty. You can buy new things in the shop. It is divided into four categories. Dinos, enclosures, buildings and decoration. Just like out of the inventory, you can drag items directly into the game and confirm your purchase. You can also just tap on it, then a small window with further information will appear. Tap on buy and the card ends up directly in your inventory. Of course, this only works if your zoo has already earned enough money. Here at the top you can see how many coins and ammonites are available. Coins are collected by visitors, so you should empty the cash registers regularly. Often there are also some for completed tasks which the different characters give you in the course of the game. Some things are available for ammonites, this is the second game currency, which is available for real money. However, ammonites can also be obtained in the reward calendar or through certain quests. Speaking of quests, your active tasks are displayed in the small circles on the left side of the screen. If you tap and hold on them, a small text with more information will appear. And if you just tap on one, you will quickly and directly get to where you can complete the task. Like to the respective shop section for example. The small double helix in the menu takes you to the DNA store. Sometimes you will receive DNA parts during the game. When you have collected a certain number of parts, you can redeem them for the corresponding card. This way you can get, for example, new dinos without having to actually buy them. DNA parts that you don't need can be scrapped for amber. They are kind of a wild card and can be used to complete DNA strands. Behind this little trophy you will find an overview on achievements. As you play, these will be completed automatically. A pop-up window that displays the reward will appear. If permanently being in your own park becomes too boring for you in the long run, then why not take a look at what others are up to? A game feature enables you to send friend requests, start chats and even visit other zoos. There's always something to do in the form of little mini-games in your friend's zoos. If you complete 10 such visits, you can open a special friend chest and you will receive the DNA pieces contained in it. At the bottom of the menu you will find the chest store. As the name suggests, you can buy various chests there. As with the friend chests, there are also a lot of DNA pieces in there. Okay, that was a lot of information, but you'll see that the gameplay is quite intuitive and will feel natural soon. Sometimes there are alternative ways to perform a certain action. For example, if you want to extend a path, you don't need to take all the steps which comprise first going to the shop, buying pieces of path, going to the inventory and then placing them. You can also just tap on a path piece to open a context menu and then select the little shop icon. And it's the same with enclosures. This way you can easily see which things can be bought in the store for the respective enclosure. A last piece of advice in the end. 
You can link your score to an Appius account or create a new account via the settings in the upper left corner. This way your score is always safe, even if you change your device for example.